Hey there everyone, it's Val and welcome back to Token Craft 2, our first day in Draconis. You probably want to watch my original first day. This one is going to cover the same ground but in a much more abbreviated fashion. Um, some of the stuff that I show in the first one is going to be more detailed. I will do more quests in the first one if you're interested in that. But uh, today is more about showing you the current state of Token Craft 2 as well as getting you started. So you could probably get away with not watching it, but you know, you might want to. Any case, let's get started, shall we? Um, I'm going to create a new world for this so you can see what it looks like when you first log in. So let's go ho go ahead and do this. Just call this first day. And this is what you're going to do. You're just going to create a new world and call it whatever you want to call it. And it is going to create, thanks to a mod called Lockdown, I believe, the world as it should be. Eventually. <laughs> This version uh, is a pre-release of 2.2.0, which should be up on the FTB launcher in a few days as of the time of this recording, which is on October the 25th. There is 60 NPC quests and 110 uh, HQM quests, which is amazing. The king has been very busy. <laughs> the mod pack author is Great Orator. And I will be including in the description links to the FTB forum post where you can uh, talk about the mod as well as links to tokencraft.com where you can uh, also read information about the mod pack. Right, so you want to set your gender, you know, whatever it is that uh, you want to be. I always change my name to Valentine here. Sometimes they refer to you as by your uh, Minecraft account name and sometimes they refer to you by the name you put in here. So I, I like to make sure that I have Valentine there. And I don't change any of those. Well, thank you very much, Elm. Now, as you can see, Elm has a purple name. The NPCs actually are color coded. The purple are the workers, uh, so as you can see, Elm is a worker. You'll see blue, there's a blue guy in the background there, he's a standard guard. Yellow are merchants, and we'll see some of those shortly. Dark purple are royal guards, we'll see some of those as well, and orange are leaders. I think I'm going to start by just giving you a little bit of a look around. We're on the docks here, and you start out with three books. Two of which you don't really need to care about at this point in time. The third one, however, you do care about. So let's just get the less important ones out of there. This is your uh, HQM quest book, and this is where the 110 quests I was talking about lives. The world is changed. You feel it in the water. You feel it in the earth. You smell it in the air. Much that once was is lost, for none now live who remember it. It began with the forging of the great rings. Three were given to the elves, immortal, wisest, and fairest of all beings. Seven to the dwarf lords, great miners, and builders of the mountain halls. And nine. Nine rings were gifted to the race of Minecrafters, who above all else desire power. But they were, all of them, deceived. For another ring was made. In the land of Middle-earth, in the fires of Mount Doom, the Dark Lord Sauron forged in secret a master ring to control all others and into this ring he poured his cruelty his malice and his will to dominate all life 
one ring to build them all, and in the darkness, mine them. That voice sounds oddly familiar. I'm not quite sure what it is. In any case, you would click here to start after you listen to the atmospheric introduction, if you wanted to listen to it. And click here to show rewards. And as you can see, we have two types of quests available to us. As you go on and do quests, you will have other areas opened. Um, there are two types of quests. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's the HQM quest, which is this. And if you press F8, you will get NPC quests. This, uh, well, we don't have any right now, but they kind of go hand in hand to start with. And you want to make sure that you complete your HQM quest first before you complete your NPC quest. Uh, that should prevent any oddities in uh, quest interaction. And so if we take a look at our first one here, Adventure Awaits. Welcome to the Tolkien Craft Mod Pack. This, these first series of quests are designed to get you up to speed with a selection of mods as well as the mechanics herein you may not already be familiar with. The goal was to give you the ability to play modded Minecraft but have the feel of, MM, of an MMO. Most importantly, this mod pack uses both HQM and custom NPCs to provide a rich interactive quest environment. To get this party started, go see what the citizens by the market fountain have to say. Off to the snooper. Remember, some quests, especially in this first section, run alongside custom NPC quests, so make sure you complete both. Turning quests, you want to make you want to make sure the book has detected the items before completion. So there that is an example of the f reason why you should read the text in the quests, because they will help you out. Um, also, Elm here, if we have a little chat with him. Hello! Thank you for uh, welcoming me to Draconis. If for some reason when you start the game your quest mode is not on, you try to open your HQM quest book and it has uh, comes up and says you're not in hard quest mode, well, talk to Elm and select that you want quest mode on. These other ones are if, you know, you happen to die and be unable to recover your quest book, you can always get a new one from Elm. And these two are basically, again, if you start with strange things happening, you can have it clear your inventory and make sure you're in survivalist, survivalist mode. In general, you shouldn't have to do any of these things, but basically he's here to help you out in the random event that you need the help. Um, Alright, I think I'd like to go over uh, a few controls before we go check out the marketplace here. Just things to help you get started. As I mentioned, you press F8 to open the NPC quest tab. You can also get to it through here, however there are some uh, special things with the tabs. There's some mod interaction going on here. Uh, if you hit the Factions tab first, and then hit the Quest tab, you can get into the quests. Uh, but F8 is, well, a lot easier. <laughs> you can also press O to not do what I thought it would. Uh, no, it actually it does. This opens your Tinker's Construct Armor tab. And currently wearing, we're wearing absolutely nothing, so it doesn't really matter but I thought I'd show you that. There's also another method of looking at your extra slots, and that's if you go here, there's actually two. There's baubles, but baubles are actually included in the Traveler's Gear uh, tab. So if you go there, you can see that it, it covers all the uh, bauble slots as well. And there's a gap here. That's because there is a special thing with Traveler's Gear. I assume it's a bug, but you have to do what I'm just typing in here now, Traveler's Gear, GUI. And if you notice these ones are slightly darker brown, you need to hit the X on these to activate them, and you'll want them because these are the Tinker's Hearts that you can get to increase the number of hearts that you have. And as you can say, this is Tinker's Heart Red, Yellow, and Green. 
and if you just escape out of that and then we go back in and look you can see that these are now available for you. You hit the equal sign to open your local map and as you can see this is well where we're starting. You can also hit the uh, slash key. It's the one that goes from the upper left to lower right. It's a, I can't remember which, which slash that is called but anyway you hit that and that puts you in underground mode and hit it again to come out of underground mode. All right. There is also morphs uh, in this mod pack. When you kill mobs, you will basically absorb their uh, configuration so you can become those creatures if you would like to in the future. You hit the left and right bracket to move amongst them. As you can see, well, we only have one choice, which right now is me. <laughs> and you can hit escape to go out of there again. Now, if you have choices, which I don't have, you can hit, uh, let's see, you can hit the tilde key when you are hovering over the right, uh, like if I had a bat in the, in this list, I would use the middle mouse button to scroll down to the bat and then hit the tilde key and that would favorite it. And the reason that the favorite is handy is after that point you can hit the tilde key and bring up your list of favorites. And then all you have to do is move your mouse to the left or right or down to select the one that you want, release the tilde key, and you will morph into that creature. I can't demonstrate that right now because I have, well, there's just me. Alrighty. Uh, for flying, uh, the first flying creature you're going to be able to whack is probably going to be a bat. You won't be able to fly, however, until after you go to the nether. And when you do go to the nether, after that point you can hit double jump and you can start flying when you're in bat form. So, that's pretty cool. I love turning into a bat. And last thing but not least, a cool uh, command that's available in a mod called Draconic Evolution that is was made specifically for this mod pack. You can hit the P key when you're holding something to place it anywhere you s choose. So there, my book is on the ground and then you just right click it to get it back. That is awesome. Alright, it looks like night in is starting to fall which is, well, not necessarily a good thing. There are monsters around. Not as much in the city as you would, uh, well, it's a city, so you shouldn't get too many. But there, there is a monster problem in Draconis. I don't know if there... Do you have a bed I can borrow? Maybe. Can I, can I borrow your bed? There we go. I would like my first day in Draconis to be somewhat in uninterrupted. Obviously, uh, you won't spend the first uh, day standing on the dock talking, so uh, let's pretend we just logged in. <laughs> um, yes, actually, I also wanted to mention I'm using the Spax Texture Pack with a, a patch that, uh, well, is for Tinker or for uh, Tolkien Craft 2, so that's why this doesn't look like vanilla, in case you were wondering. You can get that a texture pack by going to the FTB forum thread for Tolkien Craft 2 and looking at the original first post there will be a link there for uh, downloading the Spax texture pack and the patch. Alrighty, so let's get this party started. How are you doing, Kirken? Having a good day, I hope? Now, I'm actually going to go over here just a little bit. I wanted to show a couple of, of buildings before we go to the market square. Isn't that an awesome lighthouse? Every city needs a lighthouse, I do think. And this building is actually new to me. I didn't get a chance to visit it earlier. So I'm just going to take a peek around. Aha! School teacher! Hello, I just thought I'd stop by and say hello, Jennifer. 2 plus 2 equals fish. Hmm. 
Um, okay, that's a new kind of math to me. Yes, indeedy. Hopefully we are here to help your kingdom and not the uh, opposite. Pretty cool. Just need some children in here. Apparently school isn't in session yet. They must be at home having breakfast. Either that or it's the weekend. Alrighty. Now, uh, something I just wanted to mention. Uh, I, The whaley information that you see in the upper center uh, of the screen there, stone brick stairs, the default is 100% and I've reduced it to 80% because well, it's a little too big for me. But if you decide that you don't like the default and you want it smaller, just go into the Walia dot, that's W-A-I-L-A dot C-F-G file in the config folder, and you can change the percentage. Mine is at 80%. And here we have the marketplace, and it's a busy place. Good heavens. And I see my doppelganger is up and at him early this morning. Hello, me. How you doing? Indeed, I'm having fun. And hello, Valentine. I, have you caught any mouse, mice yet today? No? Well, you better get working. Alrighty, so these are the, la the people that you want to go talk to and uh, eavesdrop. So let's just kind of hang out here for a moment. And we'll listen to their conversation. I really enjoy the calming sounds of this fountain. Aye, but sad that we seem to have to watch over our shoulders so much. The increase in attacks really has me on edge. I miss the days when we could stay out all hours without a worry. That's probably why so many new visitors are coming lately, trying for fame and fortune, no less, at our expense. I hear the king has put out a call to any able-bodied citizens to join the guard to help with the assaults. Ah, there, new quest. First time in Draconis. You don't want to leave the fountain until you get that new quest showing up. And let's go over here. Away from them so they don't realize we were, well, listening in. And we'll press F8. And there we go. We got our first time in Draconis uh, NPC quest. And if we look in our HQM quest book, we have visited the Margaret Fountain, and we can now pick uh, a reward. So you can pick whichever one you want. I personally tend to go for the reward bags. Because, well, I like, I like the, uh, the present aspect. You don't know what you got inside. So let's open it up. Oh, we got some signal flares. Alrighty. Well, we don't, I don't really need those. This is a single-player world, but if you're on a server, they can help people find you. But we don't really need that. Here, uh, we have which is a place which is probably going to be your first home away from home until you build a base. You're, you'll be able to come here and see famous and not-so-famous individuals uh, having uh, tea. Oh, and I see a fellow hero of Draconis is here having breakfast. Oh, and another couple, Kitana and Hikar. Hello! I won't interrupt your breakfast, I just wanted to say hello to you. So, yeah, they look like they're busy. We'll go over here. <laughs> um, you should talk to the heroes, because uh, including my doppelganger in the square at various points as you do quests, because, well, sometimes they'll have tasks for you too. So don't forget the heroes. And you can talk to the desk clerk, and this is actually why I came into the inn. You can rent rooms. And once you've done uh, the first quest, really, uh, you'll have some cash. Actually, is it a second quest? Anyway, we'll be doing it. We'll see. Anyway, you will get money, and you can use that to have a place to call your home until such time as you build a base. Now, I would recommend that if you build a base, you build it at least a thousand blocks away from the city, so that on future map updates, um, you don't have to worry about if if the the king has had some new work done on the city, that it's gonna you know stomp all over your base. Um, 
that shouldn't happen if you go at least a thousand blocks away. Hello, Hordrin. Awesome. Alrighty, so where are we supposed to be going next? You have been summoned. We're off to see the king. Alright, so that that's our next destination, is the king. You might want to make notations on the map as you go and do various quests. Uh, the next few quests actually help walk you around the town and show you where things are. And all you have to really do is right click um, on the place in the map and just put a point, a point marker on there. So like, uh, uh, no, city gate. And there you go. You can scroll through the different groups by hovering your mouse over uh, the name and just scrolling your middle mouse wheel. And you can also go into the options and change um, any uh, settings that you want in here as well. So anyway, let's, let's get going here. So we're off to see the king. I happen to know where the king lives, but if you didn't know where the king lives, uh, well, let's see. Well, I don't see the castle listed on here, but I happen to know that the church is kind of on the way, so I'll demonstrate with the church. And as you can see, we have a nice path saying this is how you get to the church, so let's just follow that path. Hello, pussycat. And hey, look, here's... I think that's, that's a pretty awesome uh, tool to be able to uh, tell where the heck you're going. It's nope. I was just looking to see if there was a, anything that said the castle there, but there isn't. So I will just right-click on this again. And is it uh, right-click? Okay, shift right-click to turn it off. Because well, I know where we're going. I'll just take us there. Up we go. Now you will find that a lot of the, the NPCs will give you presents when you stop by. Like the mail carrier really likes to give you stamps. Unless you're on a uh, multiplayer server, you probably don't need stamps, but he, he's very generous with them and gives them to you anyway. This place will be important to you. I'm stopping here on the way to the king. This is the bank. This is where you'll want to keep your backup stuff. Oh, thank you for the cash. And. You just talk to them. You just need two silver coins to upgrade your bank so you get a bigger bigger area to store things. Yeah, I'll just do that. Thank you very much. Awesome. Okay, those frogs are loud. Let's get out of here. <laughs> I believe in the official 2.2.0 release pack, some of the background noises have had the volume reduced. Uh... Which is, is good, because some of them were still kind of loud. Ah, and according to Great Orator, who is watching this as I record, the player sounds volume controls the ambient sounds from the custom NPCs if we want to turn them down. So... Ah, so we can turn them down like that. Awesome. Thank you very much, Great Orator. Is it just me, or has this changed a little bit? Maybe I'm just confused. Oh, I think I was just confused. <laughs> Alright. Let's go see the king who is not here. He must have gone off for lunch, or what time of day is it? Hmm. Well, we can go hunt him down, I suppose. As you can see, our HQM quest did finish, because we did visit here, and we can claim the reward. However, we still need to talk to the king, because he's going to give us the companion NPC quest that's going to go with this. So we don't want to do that that part. Um, I am going to open the reward bag though. Oh, nice! 
can always use those for thomcraft. So let's just put those in there. Right. Um, let's see if we can find the king. Ah, uh, hello! As you can see, the royal guards have purple names. Charles and Bruno. Uh, I don't suppose you know where the king is, do you? He's probably... Well, I don't like to bother him when he's having lunch. And I think he probably won't even talk to me. Um, when, I, when he's not officially waiting for, uh, you know, people. Well, there was a... Yes. Oh, excuse, excuse me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Alright, now how do I get up to see the king? One of the things that I love about this city is that it is so detailed. Everywhere you go, it looks like a place where people live. Even if they have awful taste in art. They, they're having tea and... Yeah, it is night time now, so we're going to have to wait. I don't suppose we can find a place to nap until then. They're probably sleeping, so let's go up there and be very quiet. I'm going to just peek in because... Oh, yep, yeah, they are sleeping. There's the king, great orator, the queen, Epodmio, and Asmodeus, the prince. So we will, we will just sneak right back out again. Perhaps we can go have a nap. Uh... The smith is usually pretty good about letting us nap in his bed, but, uh, you know, he, he also doesn't really... Didn't used to use it, but I... Because I, he, he worked so hard. I think he's finally starting to take, uh, you know, proper sleep breaks because he was getting so exhausted. He was just falling asleep right... Right where he was working. Oh, there we go. All right. I will warn you, if we go outside, because there is the occasional wandering monster, we may in fact get, well, sent to the great beyond and have to re return again, so we'll see what happens. That's part of the reason you're here, is there's monsters, or they're not supposed to be. Alrighty, let's go down here. I have a personal shortcut that I like to take, which is over here. To get to the to the smithy. Now that's this is the graveyard. You have to be very careful going by the graveyard at night because while there is a ghost in there that is friendly to us, there is also unfriendly skeletons and zombies that like to show up in there. And that's the one place I know for sure they will be. So you'll want to be cautious. Alright. Oh, looks like he's... He's, uh... He's in his bed, so we can't borrow it. Well. Hmm. That's so cool. I don't know why they're out in the middle of the night, but uh, looks like Mummy Bobby and, or Mummy Susan and uh, the child Bobby are having a lovely little conversation. Oh, station. There is a witch there. I think I'll hide in here. the witch to a guard. Thankfully, maybe it's not a hostile witch. Oh, you're not a hostile witch. My, my apologies. I, I, I thought you were... Well... Excuse me. This is a little too loud, still. It's... It doesn't seem to be helping. Oh, well. Alrighty. Where's the moon? Alright, what else can I show you while we wait for the uh, morning to come and us to talk to the king? Well, most of the stuff is it has to do with people that we need to talk to, and well, they're all sleeping. Even sleeping in the streets, it, it, it looks like. Hmm. And I have no money, so I can't, uh, well, buy a bed for the night. 
I guess we'll go to the ship and uh, snag the bed there, unless that's in use. Let's head this way. Looks like the marketplace is bustling even in the middle of the night. So that's probably a good place to go your first day if you're stuck out at night like I am and you want to make sure you're not uh, shot by a wayward skeleton. Just go hang out in the marketplace, check out what's happening there. In our case, however, we're going to borrow the ship's captain's bed again. Alrighty. It's day. Let's get over to the king before, uh, well, he goes to bed again. <laughs> the time passes when you're, you know, having fun talking. Hello, me. Have a good day. <coughs> All right, well, uh, Great Orator just suggested a place to visit. And if we have time, once we talk to the king, uh, perhaps we'll do that. Otherwise, uh, well, it'll, I'll leave it for you to find out. Well, all I can say is talk to all the NPCs. They're all pretty cool. Let's go up here. Take my shortcut. I got away without getting a stamp. Woohoo! Mind you, I'd be going, woohoo, I got a stamp if I was on a, a multiplayer server, so. <laughs> yes! Hello, great orator, your royal highness. He says, welcome! I hope you can spare some time to help my king mount. Yes, in fact, that's why I'm here. Awesome. So, he gave me some money. However, don't spend that money. That money is for your next quest. He says, welcome to Draconis, hero. You're welcome as long as you don't cause any trouble around here. Well, what troubles the king? As of late, we've seen an increase in monsters attacking the walls, and there have been several reports of bandits harassing travelers to the village nearby. Well, it seems like a nice kingdom, actually. Nice of you to say. We pride ourselves on our openness and freedom. I have an idea. Why don't you take the coins I gave you and visit each shopkeeper and bring me back an item from each's proof? If you do, I'll make it worth the effort. On my way. Thank you. You should visit everyone, especially the apothecary, librarian, and the blacksmith. All right, so now if we look at the HQM, you can see that in our wanderings around, we visited two of them. But there are different items, or different places, I should say, that then are visited when you go to the town tour in the NPC quest. You'll want to read the text, because um, you'll see here, item infused potion dot name. Well, that's very ambiguous. You won't know which one you want to get. But if you look in the text here, it will actually tell you you want an enchanted book of reading and a potion of air and an enchanted wooden sword. So be sure to read the text for the various quests, because they will help you out if you're confused about what is wanted. Now, the king gave, gave us just enough money to complete that quest. We already had one coin from the bank, so those 16 coins are to do that quest. I'm not actually going to go around and visit the places. I think I've already demonstrated uh, how you can go there uh, to the different places and get it registered. But again, make sure you do the HQM quest first and complete it before you complete the NPC quest. And that way you shouldn't run into any problems. There's one special place that I want to mention uh, before I go and go back to the dock. I have something to look at there. You want to make sure, and you actually visit this as part of the quests, but you want to make sure you, you visit 
the Magician's Tower every day that you're in Draconis because, well, they, the wizards up there are very generous and they give you presents. And in fact, one of the presents that you get is called a Charm of Dislocation. And uh, that's basically going to let you mark a spot and return there. And in fact, I think I'll just pop up there and uh, see if we can get one so I can demonstrate how it's used. Now, like I said, if you follow the quest line, if you go here, um, once you finish this section, then you'll get sent over here. So you don't need to go out of order like I am. I'm just doing this because, well, I want to demonstrate the charm. So if I was a bat, I could fly there a little quicker, but... Uh, when you're in a new world, you have to hoof it. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Wow. Love the buildings. Love the buildings. Woohoo! Oop, already got some presents, as you can see. And that's for Botania. Tarmaroot, Witchery, and here is we got our Charm of Dislocation. The fellow that normally gives you these is Brandon the Draconic Master. And it just so happens that the mod developer is named Brandon3055. So thank you very much for the fantastic work you've done in your Draconic Evolution mod. It's, it's fantastic. As well, I, like to th I think all the mods in this pack have been selected with great care. And I'm enjoying them. I am enjoying them a lot. Alrighty, so I'm going to demonstrate uh, how you use this uh, after I have a snack. So what you want to do is you want to shift and right click on a spot where you want to mark it. You can't uh, rebind these, so pick your spot carefully. Uh, I'm going to pick a spot right here. And you can see the teleporter is bound to this particular location. Now, all I have to do is right-click it. I'm going to go stand over here, right-click it, and voila, I'm over here. So you can see how that is going to be very useful for you. And since you can get a new one of these every Minecraft day, you'll want to come and visit Brandon and his fellow wizards every day. Um, until you get a, a good supply of them. You can rename these in anvils, you know, to, to give the, it a name that means something to you. So, for example, uh, I have one labeled Bat Barn Base, which is my base, and I have one labeled Draconis that I keep on me at all times. And something that I keep forgetting to do myself, but I wanted to mention uh, to you, is these are also fantastic get-out-of-trouble cards. If you can keep one on your hotbar and not accidentally click on it when you don't mean to, if you get into trouble over your head and you want to get out of dodge, hit right click and you're you're gone. You're safe. <laughs> so yeah, they're they're fantastic. Now they do have limited uses. If you look at this, it says I have 19 uses remaining. Um, but since Brandon is so generous with them, that really is not a big problem. Now let's go to the dock and check out. Um, Great orator suggested we have a chat with somebody. Because appar apparently there's something interesting about that, Captain. Oops, I'm getting lost. Right, this is the residential section. We don't, we don't, uh, don't need to come in here. Alrighty then. Just going to take a shortcut here through the lumber yard. The city's a little confusing at first, particularly if you're direction challenged like I am. But it doesn't take you too long to figure out where everything is. But, you know, it, it's, it's a city, you know, and you should expect to get a little lost at first. But that's why we have... We have the direction posts, which are very useful. Alrighty. Oh, and the sun's already setting, so let's go visit that, uh, that fellow. Ah! 
Alrighty. I believe it was the black ship we're supposed to visit. And see, see if we see something cool about it. Or the individual here. Interesting. Don't know where. The, let's check the captain's cabin first. <laughs> Hello. Oh, what, what did you? An oak map frame. Well, thank you very kindly. A wise monkey keeps only company with a fancy dog and a foul gold. I don't understand you at all. What has four wooden legs and hangs out in a bar? If you answered a bar stool, you've apparently never partied with a pack of pirates. This is quite true, I haven't. And you... Now, I might be wrong, but I think you are... You might be a relative of an individual named, uh... Jack Sparrow. Would I be correct? You're not going to tell me, are you? It's a secret. Okay, well, fine, but uh, I, I have my suspicions. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm just gonna have a peek down here. Ew. Oh, apparently they're just arriving. They haven't resupplied yet. Now, you can actually uh, pilfer things off of shells if you're so inclined. Uh, it all depends on what kind of uh, hero you want to be. Myself, I try not to take things that I feel has a current owner, but, uh, well, you are who you are. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this tour uh, of your first day in Draconis. Again, if you want to see a little bit more on doing the quests, I did more of that in my first tour, but I didn't think that was necessary to do again. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to talk about. And I, nope, I think I covered everything. Um, I would like to say thank you, Great Orator, for this fantastic mod pack and all the work you've put into creating the quests and creating the town and selecting all, all the uh, fantastic mods that are in this fantastic mod pack. I like the word fantastic today, apparently. That's fantastic. <laughs> In any case, um, I would like to say that I also stream uh, five days a week, Tolkien Craft 2. So please stop by my channel on Twitch and see what's happening. You all take care now. Bye! <laughs>